I think she knows. No way! She knows. Well, maybe. Maybe. Alright, so she's the most perceptive woman I've ever met. She misses nothing. So the fact that she was checking out y'all's Instagram a little bit does give me some, some pause, but I think we pulled it over enough to where she's going to be a little bit shocked when y'all roll in. So I'm looking forward to it. It's been a beautiful day. You know, it, it went from forecast said 84 and hot to 62 and rainy. And I think it's gonna end with like a 60 and partly cloudy kind of thing. So perfect for the photos, videos, if you will, as well. And uh, just good, comfortable weather. People gonna be dancing, having fun, good drinks, good vibes, good haircuts. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. It's gonna be a good vibe, man. Good times for everybody. Feeling light, man. I got a little breakfast in my system. Picked up some food for me and the barber. Amen. Sir Dewan Bonds. You ain't eating yet, though. Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm eating stomach growling. I know, man. Let's, let's get through this cut. We can eat. <laughs> I'm feeling good, man. Um, I woke up today, got a workout in. Saw my parents, my brothers. I was, all the brothers haven't been together for five years. So it was cool to, to have them all there. And now I'm getting a chop. And I'm about to throw on some threads here in a minute. Maybe have a drink or two. Survive. Definitely gotta we have definitely one. Got it. Before, before you leave. Oh, I mean, you know. Okay. Yeah, time, well, some, oh, time does permit. Okay. Time, no, no time is real. We can do a little something. Message for Hannah. My love, my sweet, my steady in the storm. Listen, uh, I'm happy you make, you make me the happiest man that I ever could be. I appreciate you. All you do, the small things, big things, like bringing in friends from other countries. Like, who does that? Who pulls that off? It's impossible. Um, you're clearly the right choice, and um, I'm very excited to see what every tomorrow brings. With your boy!
on I knew that I would one day marry you he brought me a sense of peace I had never known it was the feeling of coming home for you are my home the one place in this big wide world I feel the most safe the one place I am able to unpack, undress, and unwind free from judgment. The one place, no matter what life brings, I will find my way back to. Marrying you, becoming your wife is the easiest, most natural decision of my life. I have never been more confident I have never been more proud. Oh. I am overwhelmed with gratitude and joy, committing to a lifetime alongside a great man and the most beautiful spirit I know. Your zest for life, commitment to your faith, tireless work ethic and inability to know a stranger. <laughs> Our daily reminders of the blessing that each morning is and that no moment is too small to be impactful. Our abbreviated language, <laughs> impromptu duets and relentless laughter have taught me how to not take life too seriously. And that more often than not, the best remedy to any funk is merely a moment with you. You are my best friend, the love of my life, the very best part of my every day. Forever is a long time, and I am certain it won't be long enough. 
loving you is easy. For it is in loving you, I am my most authentic self. As we embark on the journey of a lifetime, I give you my all, starting with my word. I vow to seek understanding over being understood, to love you as you need rather than as I want, and to choose growth over comfort throughout every season of our lives. I vow to challenge your potential and encourage your dreams, reminding you gently, but often, of the immeasurable value and beauty in simply being. I vow to play, to laugh, to explore, and to create alongside you as we build a life together as imperfect humans, trusting in the foundation we poured ourselves into. I vow to choose you with every breath until my very last. I love you more than ever, and we have only just begun. Hannah. <laughs> You are the 6'3", Chris Brown, doppelganger, <laughs> but you got me. This is not only proof of God's existence by stripping you of that ill-fated dream, but also his sense of humor because I'm maybe the opposite of who you thought you would be with. On March 11th, 2020, the world stopped just as mine began. Many couples were ripped apart, love expired, dedication dissipated, you and I, contrarian as can be, thrived in an eye of a storm, a global tempest. We danced in the rain and found stability and joy in one another. Explaining the depth of my love for you, God's love, is impossible, but I will endeavor to do so nonetheless. I promise to love you through our contrasts. I promise to bring you laughter when you get a little funky. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I promise to let you always do the far easier task of ordering groceries <laughs> for delivery whilst I brave the odyssey to Trader Joe's 25 minutes each way. I promise to wipe away your bittersweet tears as we stock our fridge because you're so moved by the blessing of food and shelter that millions will never experience. I promise to have a baby just us trip each year because you and your presence is more valuable than the multiplier of all these souls I love so dearly. I promise to always drive so you can kick your shoes off and place your feet on the dashboard. I promise to let you sleep with your mouth open and not bother you. <laughs> I promise to submit to your far greater gift-giving ability and learn from your masterful generosity. I promise to let you pick all of our Bible reading plans because your soul speaks to God in such a pure way that God listens and gifts you with sight into truths that help our relationship grow. My sweets, your algebra personified, precise and accurate to the decimal. I'm chaos theory math that seemingly operates in arbitrary, but I assure you there is a method to this madness. Nobel Prize winning mathematician John Forbes Nash Jr. specialized in differential equations and factors that govern change in decision making. Genius as he was, <laughs> not even he could grasp the depths of chance and variable it took for us to stand here today. To brave the elements shifting above us day in and day out, 84 last week, 62 today. In his acceptance speech for the Nobel, he paid tribute to his greatest muse, his wife. His words capture my feelings in a way that is fitting and that I simply could not. And so something borrowed 
for this day for me will be his words. My quest has taken me through the physical, the metaphysical, the delusional, and back. I have made the greatest discovery of my career, <clears throat> of my life. It is only in the mysterious equations of love that any logic or reasons can be found. I'm only here today because of you. You are the reason I am. You are all of my reasons. Thank you, and I love you. By the power vested in us, by the Universal Life Church, we now pronounce you husband and wife, Adam and Anna Christopher Brown. We are beyond thrilled to, for the first time, represent and present the newest Ladies and gentlemen, if we could have your attention, please. Give me a little level on that. Give me, give me a little sound effect on that if you got one, baby. Give me a little. No, you don't want that. Y'all don't want it? <laughs> all right. First of all, um, just want to thank everybody for being here. As I look out, Hannah and I have an intimate individual relationship with every single soul here, and that means a lot to us. Uh, we love Kansas City and everybody in it, but... There are under 100 people here, and that's because we love each of you, and we hand-picked you. So know that you are special to us individually and collectively. If you're in a relationship or not, doesn't matter. Love y'all. Thank you for being here. Uh, we've got some folks that want to probably roast me and shower Hannah with accolades. She well deserves. So y'all, I'm rarely outclassed in attire and words, and I was defeating them both today squarely. Some people say I've met my match, and I say I've met one that surpassed me, and that's the goal. So, in the in the words of Harrison Butker, out kicking your coverage, this is what this is about, and I'm very excited about it. So, thank you to my beautiful bride for being here, for being you, and damn, just wearing the hell out of everything. <laughs> With that, I've spoken enough today. I'm gonna pass the mic to one Elliot Kerr to leave us with some remarks here and then uh, a couple of fellows of mine and then uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. If anybody has anything you want to add to it, you may. The mic is yours, but let's give a round of applause to Elliot Kerr. Okay, so first, 
I was told to take a picture of the wedding from my point of view. So, like, squish together as much as you can in this area and I'll take your photo if you want to be in it. I mean, it's going to be the best photo of the wedding, so. Ready? One. Oh yeah, wait, you go right there. Get down in there, get down in that. It's like, no, 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 you two, you two, come over here. I want you over here. There we go, there we go. Emma, am I doing a good job? Ready? One, two, three, yay! Okay. If you don't frame this, I'll be upset. Okay. If there's one thing I've learned from Hannah, it's this. Don't throw away your toothbrush. Now that only makes sense to Han right now, but hopefully I can shed some light on that silly lesson by the end of this. Those of you that don't know me, my name is Elliot, and I usually go by Ellie, but Adam gets mad at me when I say my name is Ellie because it's Elliot. <laughs> it's Elliot. And I met Hannah a little over two years ago over a whipped coffee trend from COVID. I was out on our rooftop pool enjoying said coffee and a novella when Han came out and sat on the couch and she yelled over to me, is that one of those whipped coffees? <laughs> yes, yes it is. And then I saw she had a cat on her water cup and I knew we were destined to be besties. Han and I spent pretty much every day after that together at the pool going for walks, breakfast dates, and coffee runs. It is through these small, seemingly meaningless moments that I received the privilege of learning what an incredible woman Han is. Not only is she stunning on the outside, but the inside too. I've never met someone whose inner beauty shines so effortlessly through every pore. You exude kindness and humility constantly. You love your people so fiercely, it's inspiring. You are gentle and soft, yet strong and firm with your words, actions, and thoughts. A balance that is incredibly difficult to achieve. Now I swear I met Adam the day I moved into my apartment because he was wearing that crazy yellow jacket that like everybody knows that he wears constantly. However, he disagrees. Granted, it was the day of the Super Bowl and it was actually the one we won. So who knows if he's a reliable historian of this day. So we met roughly 10 minutes after I met Hannah, and I was immediately struck by his ability to make me feel so welcomed and loved, a strength of his I came to learn. We all spent the afternoon together, and the night came, and I asked Adam to hang out. Naturally, he said yes. And I don't know if Hannah knows this, but immediately, <laughs> I'm done with that one. But immediately, he asked if Hannah was coming. It was at that moment I knew Hannah was more than a friend. Now back to that toothbrush. The one and only fight I remember Han coming to me with while they were dating completely escapes me. Besides looking, her looking at me in complete despair and saying, and then I threw my toothbrush away. <laughs> she called into work and we spent the rest of the day at the pool feeling our feels. This is when I learned how deeply you feel for the people you love. You were more upset that you threw away your toothbrush and how that possibly could make Adam feel than the actual disagreement. Being the ever so single cat lady that I am, people often ask me what I'm looking for. I say I have one relationship in mind and it's yours. It's honest and true, uniquely you. It's safe and exciting, supportive yet challenging. Phoebe from Friends calls Ross Rachel's lobster. Lobster is made for life, in case you didn't know that. Um, and the, since that, or lobster's mate is so important to them, they never let them go. Much like you and I never let go of our physical toothbrushes. I guess what I'm saying is, Hannah, you never threw away your toothbrush. He's standing right there next to you. And will be forever. I love you both. Cheers. I was putting Adam's suit jacket on, and I looked at him and I said, hey man, just, add, just ask God to be present. And God was so present during guys' ceremony. I don't think anyone that was married or you know, in a relationship or not deny that 
God was there, and that was very, very intimate and special. So, to you guys. All right. Um, I've known Adam for like 20 years, and uh, got a lot of stories, high school, college, family dinners, thanks to Willie, traveling across the world to see you, um, but no amount of time or distance can break the bond and love that we have as brothers. Shout out to Die Diego! True brother, I love you too. <laughs> so how many of you watched uh, This Is Us? Show, series. I mean, that's Randall. And I'm a little something like Kevin. Randall is smart. He is witty. He is charming. He is dedicated. Professionally driven. Noble. And most of all, you're a man that gives everything to everyone else. Kevin, on the other hand, man, he's dumb. Kind of, <laughs> kind of good looking and just trying to stay out of trouble. Uh, man, we laugh, we argue, uh, we teach each other stuff that uh, no one else knows or tells about. For example, I go to you on advice on my career, my relationships. How to pay my taxes, <laughs> bailing me out of jail. For me, man, I give you some priceless advice. How to cook that frozen pizza, what shoes to wear with your suit. Um, but honestly, you have three blood brothers, Mickey, Steven, Billy. Those guys, those brothers, Cheers to you guys, everything you've done. But I'm gonna be honest, all your guys' best traits, they shine in Adam. <laughs> I mean, you still the line. I was gonna say, the last one is the best one. And you truly are, Adam. But I think all the credit really goes to your parents, Margie, Willie. Yay! Um, I hope you understand, like, your son is so, so, so proud of the parents he has, the way that he was raised. Um, and again, thank you for everything because he shines because of your guys' hard work and, and parenthood. Um, all right. Now I gotta say a little something about Miss Hannah, AKA Miss Miller. I mean, we've been calling you that from day one. Like, you came around and we all knew you were something special. But I really think you're a miracle worker. Um, Adam in high school got diagnosed with a pretty severe disease. And I don't think it went away until you showed up. And um, him showing up on time? That don't happen no more! Um... But in all seriousness, I think you're a very, very special woman. And I looked up your meaning of your name. Hannah in Italian means favor. And then in Greek, it means grace. And I truly believe that fits you perfectly because time and time again, you're gonna show this man so much grace and so much love. Um, and there's, there's no one perfect but Adam's perfect for you. And uh, his love, it's gonna be shine like boldly, loudly with pride, but at times it's gonna be very quiet, it's gonna be intimate and for only you to see and feel. So I wanna reflect on this saying, falling in love. I think most will agree, love is crazy. 
But why do we say falling, you know? Shouldn't we be saying rising in love? But that notion of falling actually goes back to extremely fundamental things that we do, the way that we approach our life. You see, we take an ungodly risk each and every day to live out our lives. So for all of us, life is an act of faith. It's an act of God. The moment you take a step, you're acting in faith. The moment you take a journey, what an act of faith. The moment you commit to any relationship with someone, what an act of faith. And to do so, you have to give yourself up. But to do so, I think is the most powerful thing you can do. Surrender. Surrender to love. Love is the ultimate surrender to someone else and another person. So let go of that ego. Grasp on to faith, trust, loyalty, forgiveness, love, and grace. May your marriage be an example of the faith that you have and the everlasting love you're built together. Cheers to Adam and Hannah. All right, Keith. All right, all right. I won't be that long. I'll, get, I'll just do a few words for everybody. So, um, All right, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, my name is Keith Spreckles. I want to thank the Millers, the Friar Dicks, Adam and Hannah for throwing me this extravagant birthday party. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you all very much. Thank you. Hey, hey, 35 years young, you're on your way, my friend. That's good. Listen, so I've been... I've been trying to figure out what to say. It's really difficult. I've been workshopping it all week. Um, I went back and forth between, oh, I'll do some jokes, and oh, I'll, uh, I'll say something sentimental. And uh, actually, until Addison went, I didn't really know what to do. So I'm kind of, I'm going off the cuff here for you. Yeah. Oh, don't look like that. That's good. Um, so, you know, I, I want to do something more, like, like a little nicer. Like, I don't want to, like, roast the groom. So, you know what I don't want to do? I don't want to tell the story about the time we met when you got your head stuck in the monkey bars when we were five years old. Hey, Adam, I'm not going to tell anybody about that tonight. No. I would never tell him, like, we all came in and you were holding the bars, kicking your legs. Right? You remember that? I, this is not the time and place for that. I don't want to do that. No. I would never tell anybody that story now. No. So I'm not going to do that. Um, oh, you know what else, Adam? I don't want to talk about Hannah. Did you know Adam holds a baseball world record? He was hit four times in one inning by a baseball. But... But, Adam, tonight's not the night for that, though. I don't want to talk about that. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> Mickey, hey, Mickey, be nice. Be nice to your brother. But, hey, no, listen, so I don't want to talk about, so he was hitting. He was standing at the plate. So he wasn't really hitting, but he was standing at the plate. He got hit with the ball at the plate. He went to first base. This is 100% true. Evan was there, actually. So was Brian. Um, he went to first base. He, he tried to steal and came back to first, got hit. He stole second, got hit by the ball. He ran the third guy hit, and he scored and got hit at home plate two. And we said, Adam, you should quit. And he goes, no, nah, I'll be okay. So he kept playing, but we, yeah. But, but tonight's not the time for that, so we're not going to do, we're not going to do that tonight. Adam, I would never, I would, <laughs> Adam, Adam, I would never embarrass you like that in front of your family and friends. I wouldn't do that. Um, and actually, Hannah, did you know, <laughs> right, Mickey, that's true. That's fine. Um. Hannah, did you know he actually used to dress better when we were younger than he did now? But like, but at, no, today is the best of all time, though. Like Adam's suit, I know we gave it up for everybody else, but Adam's suit is on point. Tom Paolini, thank you for doing that, right? Right. Um, actually, uh, although I don't really want to touch on it too long, but like when we were younger, we used to go out in suits to the bar, because I don't know why, though. Tell me that. So I get to Adam's house in a full suit. We were freshmen in college, okay? Willie, you're gonna remember this. I show up in a full suit, it's 9 p.m. and we're getting ready to go out and Willie goes, hey man, uh, you wanna come help me with some furniture, man? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. He goes, okay, come to the garage, man. Adam, come on down here, man. It, it just take a second. It was the biggest entertainment unit you've ever seen. 
We were in full suits, and Willie goes, nah, nah, you can get it around. Shit, you turn around the corner, man, be fine. We got there an hour and a half late, but we were, we, we still look good, and Willie still said, thanks, man, appreciate you coming out, man. <laughs> Only for you, Willie, we love you. <laughs> oh, thank you, I was so nervous to do that. I thought, he, I thought Willie would be so mad if I did that. <laughs> Mickey, I even called Mickey and said, Mickey, if I do an impression of Willie, do you think he's gonna come up and get all mad at me? <laughs> You said, if it's good, it'd be all right. If it's not, you might be, you might be like Will Smith. Be Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I told Mickey, that's bad advice. You didn't tell me to do anything. You said, better be good. <laughs> right. So, no, you know, I've heard a lot of speeches over the years, and uh, I really didn't want to roast you. I thought it'd be kind of fun, though. Um, yeah, I did. I thought it'd be a fun time. No, but in all seriousness, I actually read something one time. I, well, sorry, I listened to something. I listened to something one time. I wrote it down afterwards. Um, that uh, love is your soul's recognition of its counterpart in another. And I really appreciate that you both found that. It's an amazing thing. For all those that are married or looking for it, it's the best thing there is. So uh, believe in each other, communicate, and uh, you'll be together forever. So I appreciate you both. We love you. Cheers to the happy couple. Make some noise for everybody who just spoke. Make some noise for the bride and groom. Let's have a lovely time.